Welcome back to Inspired Inc., the Comics Wellspring podcast, a show where we promote indie comic creators and become inspired by what they create and their journey of creating it. Today on the show, we have Pat O'Malley of Punch Publishing, where we talk about what it's like working with an editor and the pros and cons of that, and navigating publishing and learning how to self-publish and choose small publishers, and also why you should just make the comics you want to read. All of this and so much more on today's Inspired Inc. make it happen I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to make it happen it's hard it, but you know like what the crazy part is like you know people will read a comic for 10 minutes you know something that took you like a couple years to make you know you could blast through a comic so quick you know what i mean but like the amount of effort that goes into them i mean it's just crazy it is it is you know i i do that i'll read a comic so fast sometimes and like not think about everything that mm -hmm. goes into it you know but then on the other end of it when i'm making stuff it's just like it is like years they stack up because i'm just like you know it's hard it's hard to to produce these things independently and and you know have them be like worthy of getting out there you know like yeah. you could probably throw something together but like when you really put yourself into it and try to tell the story and you know it's 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 funny how how the time is so different you know between like the fan reading it and the production of making it you know Oh, 100 percent. You know, it's funny you say that because I know a real perspective about this. I wrote a two page story for this anthology piece and Alex, uh, my co-host on Apollo City Comics, you know, we're each other's editors. So right. we're always working with each other on that stuff. And I sent him the script and we literally spent like a whole morning just arguing about one word and like the the placement and like should we swap out this word and i was in agreement and he was trying to swap it out and i was like i don't know do. and we went in this whole debacle about it and i was like dude we spent the entire morning arguing about one word and then putting in the perspective you just said like someone's gonna read this two-page story yeah breeze right through it in less than a minute like yeah. that's that's like the thing about it you know we put a lot it's into funny it. it's just you know it's funny how do you um what, what what are you working on right now what's uh you have a lot of stuff going on and i really really admire it um but what's your big thing at the moment thanks man uh so right now we are deep in the jurassic parkour 4 which is uh something i co-created with a college buddy he's not really into comics but he him and i have been working on the dinosaurs since no lie 2013 oh, wow. uh Originally, we were trying to make it as a cartoon, make it as like ourselves. And, oh, wow. uh, okay. you know, I like learned animation and we had this whole thing and we made a sizzle reel and all this stuff. And it's like so hard to sell a cartoon. <laughs> it's like so hard to do that and like not even sell it, make it, sell it the whole deal. So, you know, years would go, would go by and we would be like kind of working on it. Not really. And then, you know, once I made Pop Scars, I showed it to him and I was like, dude, comics, like, you know, think about Ninja Turtles and like how they got started. It was like the comic books first. Then it was the cartoons, toys, movies, mm -hmm. you know? So like he really liked pop scars and got on board with, you know, okay, let's re let's, let's turn our pilot into a comic. And okay. that's kind of what we did. And the artists on it, Ari DeCandido and Ari Iassi are working on it. And <clears throat> Man, they just like get it. They get the vibe. They get how to make it fun. They get how to make it like cartoony. It's like a 90s cartoon love letter. Um, but then we were just like, well, you know, one issue takes 10 minutes to read. Let's let's give them like a graphic novel. Let's give them like the book, you know. So that's what we're working on now is like getting that to the finish line. Uh, so we're doing the Kickstarter now. And then um, – <clears throat> Man, I have a bunch of projects. I know you do too, but I'm, I, you know, I have something with my wife. She has a book oh, cool. that she's working on that I'm kind of helping with, which is really sick. It's kind of like, uh, like a high fashion horror story, which is oh, like rad. really rad. Um, so we're doing that kind of keeping that one quiet for now, but that one's really cool. Very excited about it. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I would like to do, you know, I talked to Mark from lesser known comics a little bit about, you know, doing some kind of anthology mm -hmm. adjacent to Pop Scars, which I think yeah. is like a really fun idea. Um, I kind of have something for it. Uh, so we'll see how that like 
progresses. But yeah, I know you and I talked about anthology stuff a bit ago. Um, I definitely want to like talk more about that and see what you think and kind of figure out the best way to to build it. You know, that's probably like the thing I'm most curious about is like I've done issues and I've done graphic novels and now I'm like the anthology thing is a little different. I haven't done that before where you don't have full control and that's cool because you get to like have other people, you know, bring some st- cool new stuff to the table. Um, I think I'm just trying to find like making sure my way in is right mm-hmm. and h- how to delegate who does what, you know, without like being overbearing on, on the story and creative process for people, you know? Oh dude. Yeah. A hundred percent. There's so much to unpack there. Um, I mean, that's the thing you just started with, you know, we both have a lot of projects in the works and finding the mental capacity and the effort to like navigate and pivot from project to project. Um, a lot of people are very one focused and how do you feel going from one story to another story or do you like working on one the entire way through and then pivoting to the next one i like having a bunch to juggle i like being able to like throw one up while i play with this one and then when i'm like oh i lost interest throw it up catch a different one you know i i like that a lot because even like the stuff that i just mentioned that's like the stuff in like kind of in production like i have stuff that i'm developing i'm sure Mm -hmm. like you know a giant list of ideas that I rank. I have this like system that I rank them on yeah. and uh, I kind of move some to the top and then those are the ones I kind of work on more. But I've been, I, I started to kind of not writing again, but like editing some stuff, editing oh, some nice. scripts, you know, and trying to get them a little bit tighter, a little bit more closer to ready, you know? So how do you, how do you approach scripts from an editing perspective? Like what do you look at differently being a creator um when you're looking at scripts and what's like the benefit of having like an editor um not just like someone give you feedback as a second pair of eyes but to take on an editor role like what does that mean to you so when i first started making comics like i didn't know what i was doing with with pop scars i just had like years of outlines and i wrote a script that was really weird like formatted very strangely because i didn't know like how to write it, how to do this. And then I, I met Phil after like being passed around by a bunch of people. I finally met Phil, my editor, and he like showed me how to make a comic. So that was part of his role was like showing me actually, like, here's why you do things on this page versus this page. Here's why you only do certain amount of this, certain amount of balloons or whatever. You know, he like guided me through it while helping me like reformat the book and for like a comic script. So after, I think I wrote the first issue, no, no lie, like 22 times that he like wow. passed it back and forth with me because it was just like, I had an idea. I, I more than an idea, like I knew what I wanted, but it was just like pulling it out was difficult because I'm used to like movie and film stuff where the scripts are a little different the way, you know, you're, you're not working in freeze frames. You're working in like movement. So like, changing to like finding that single moment that's tricky that was a tricky thing to kind of learn the Uh, biggest mistake i see with uh scripts when i go over them is just too much movement like you know not only just too much like happening in a scene but just too many movements going on the scene like you can't and and the same panel yeah you know what i mean like yeah it feels like natural to be like he he picks this up and he drinks it and that's one shot but no it's you know it's either he's drinking or picking up you know it's like yeah so, you know, he taught me a lot about how to make comics. And then I felt like by the time issue three, four, five, six was happening, I was like, okay, I, I like, I feel good about this. I like, I need less hands-on editing and more just like, you know, what do you think about this? Is this scene working? You know, we did a lot of that for Pop Scars because some of it kind of goes far a little bit into territory that's like, okay. You know, all right. Yeah. yeah exactly. So I just wanted to make sure with him, like, do you think this is far enough, but not like ruining the reading experience? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. we had a lot of discussions about stuff, but it was good. It all made the book better. You know, it always makes the book better. I think when you work something out and you tweak it and you find the right version of it. Um, when I edit stuff, I kind of just set my scripts up as like, almost like lists of like, here's what happens on page one, two, three, four, and maybe a little bit of breakdown. But then once I just get that out, you know, my writing has changed for comics. It's just like, 
I'll, I'll get that stuff out. And then when I go back to edit, I'll add like a little bit more of like the muscle to the bones of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then just keep doing that. I do a lot of passes of stuff and it, hopefully by the end, it feels like fully formed, but you know, it takes a lot to, to build it. You know, it's sometimes it's just, you know, a quick, a quick line for a whole page. And then you got to kind of find what that is and what the details that you actually need to, to give your artist, they get, they're not just going to make it up. They will. And you'll probably be like, Oh, that's not what I was thinking. But like, yeah, you need to, you need to give them everything. And it's sometimes you have to see it a couple times and be like, Oh, I'm, I'm missing something, you know? I totally agree with that. Um, you know, there's a lot of like what you just said that really resonates one, just like, I feel like the beginning scripts, maybe the first two have the heaviest amount of editing because you're just trying to get like, oh, I'm making these few little mistakes. If I just correct these three mistakes I'm repeatedly making, that eliminates like 90% of my future edits. And, you know, from there, you kind of build a relationship with an editor, a good communication aspect where you guys just understand where it's going and what's happening. So then it is going from heavy editing from like story structure, what's happening, what we're being given to just like, all right, well, we got the flow. That's like, how do we feel about it from here on? And then maybe I feel like the last issue would have the heaviest editing to make sure like you're kind of you're, wrapping up. You're the landing story. it yep. for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's true. And, you know, also with that, it's, you know, editing is such a weird thing because you're supposed to like not give the creator the ideas you know it's kind of just taking their ideas and seeing what you could amplify or you know tone down a little bit sometimes um mm -hmm. i see a lot of editors sometimes feeding too many ideas to a creator and now it's becoming the editor story and how they would imagine things going where a suggestion is yeah. probably good but changing things is just like now you're overstepping that boundary so boundaries as an editor i feel like is another key aspect to people just kind of overlook and don't realize oh i think that's really true i think phil was very careful about like what he wanted to overstep and like mm -hmm. sometimes there'd be a moment where i'd be like dude just overstep like tell me yeah. what you like think would be best here because i'm i kind of am stretched so thin over the whole thing of it you know it's hard to hyper focus on one point so sometimes i would need him to come in and be like okay i think this would be best and then i could be like yeah i think you're right you know sometimes that help would go a long way but i, I also am like someone who is very like i like to do what i like to do so if someone does kind of overstep i'm like eh, i don't know man i yeah. think it's gonna be better this way <laughs> and that's another thing too and especially as an indie creator you know the whole point you know or at least a very large point of an indie creator's book is to make the art that you want to make. And, you know, I've heard too many from, from too many people who have published with other people, or I grew up watching behind the music and all these musicians where they go in the studio and they record an album and they're like, it's not exactly how I wanted it. Um, we had to tweak and change so much or movie executives mm -hmm. tweaked and changed so much that it just isn't really their true work. Right. And I hate seeing that because so when you have an editor that's like overstepping boundaries or you don't know how to say no to an editor and mm -hmm. set boundaries, you're going to lose parts of your work, I feel. And, you know, when you're making an indie book, you want it to be your story and your tale and you don't For want sure. it to be messed with. And that's like the whole beautiful thing about indie comics is that it's coming from you and directly from you. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, we, you've published with, you know, from some, you know, bigger publishers from most people. And you've published with some smaller publishers and all that. Um, I feel like you you have like a lot of experience to speak about on finding that balance between what I feel, what you feel should be creator owned and your own and what you should pitch to publishers. Do you kind of take an approach like that too? I do. Yeah. I think sometimes you can feel it. Sometimes you could feel like one story has like legs that, that will just go further. But mm -hmm. also, you know, sometimes I, you know, even the dinosaurs, I, we pitched the dinosaurs to two publishers and it never got in you know and that just made me feel like okay maybe they're just not seeing it like i am and mm -hmm. that's fine but that means that i just have to keep we'll just do it on our own and figure it out and get it out there you know um it's tr it's tricky though i think you know so much can change when you get with someone 
you know, mm-hmm. and, and you're right. Sometimes stuff is too precious. So if it's like something that is really close to your chest that either have it done already and then pitch it, you know, but even yeah. then it's like, it, there's no guarantee that it won't get altered. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I think it's, I think it's hard. Sometimes you just have to know, like the, the this feels right for this project. This feels right for this project, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think we're lucky to get published once even, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, Um, honestly, there's a lot of creators out there. (laughs) And so just can't landing it for a bit is awesome. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think it, it's interesting when it's like, you know, just because you get the one doesn't mean you're going to get the next or the next or the next, you know? So it's like, Mm -hmm. you, you have to keep the hustle going. You have to keep making stuff like there's no, I guess it's funny when you get like a win, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. what is a win in comics and like getting published is a win, right? Yeah. Uh, I, th- you would think it's a, it's a big win, but also you think so much stuff is going to change because of it. You have expectations now of like yourself and, you know, but like at the end of the day, it's like, you still have to be putting stuff on the page, editing, hustling, finding the right artist you're, you're still like that producer role like and it, it's still very independent you know no matter I, I think what level you get to it's you still have to have that like desire to keep pushing it keep pushing it and you can't rest on like laurels of, of of one successful thing you know what i mean i think it was like brian michael bendis that like won a ringo or like an eisner or something and then he was just like i was so excited that it could be mark wade too i don't even remember who it was um they were like just so excited and they finally hit this pinnacle moment and then they you know the night ended they woke up the next day and they're like oh i'm back in my day job doing caricatures on the you know yeah. the boardwalk or whatever like nothing nothing yeah. has really changed you've just finally unlocked you got that little xbox achievement basically you know i think like, it i think it changes more for everyone uh, like like people looking at you they say yeah. oh you, you did this thing you did this awesome thing you know and it's like well i did but now i'm trying to do this other awesome thing and it's not kind of working as well but i still love it and i'm still gonna do it you know mm-hmm. i think that's what comics is you just have to like if you really want it there's no stopping you that you just you just find the ways you know you know, I think that's really good advice, especially because there's a lot of creators who their only goal is to get in with Marvel or DC or yeah. IDW and Dark Horse and Image and whatnot. When it's like, you know, the look how many comics are coming out of these publishers and look at how many people are making comics. Yeah, like, like, don't let that be a roadblock just because you're not hitting these. Like, find different avenues, learn to know how to pivot and like, you know, kind of not be more realistic. I hate saying that but find the right you know avenue for you that's going to get your work made and out there because essentially that's the hardest part and the more you get to do that the more you actually might get noticed by these other publishers for possibly completing a story or various stories Mm -hmm. um and not just being a one and done type of person because i feel like that's also why it's so hard publishers i think you know you put out a book what well, doesn't mean you could put out a second book doesn't mean you could right. put out a third book or a fourth right. or finish a series and tell a story well and very well completed. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so many factors that go into that because in the long run, you know, a lot of these publishers are signing people on so they can make money so they could put out your books. Whereas like indie smaller, you know, a lot of smaller press like you know, or independently run, you know, if mm-hmm. it's by yourself, if it's with a team, whatever, they're kind of looking at just getting your book made and out there and in the open and into people's hands. It's a difference in goals I seem to see. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think I I have no problem with like the production stuff. I love making the books, putting them mm-hmm. together, like finding the story, finding the team. I love that stuff. That's like my favorite part. I think what a lot of us as creative people, indie creative people, like that's the, that's as far as we go. I think the rest of that, of like, publishing distribution marketing all that stuff is like the really difficult part of the job that you don't realize is part of the job yeah and like that's the that's that's the hardest part i wish that there i mean i think there is it's now is a great time because you could just share stuff and it's so Mm -hmm. easy to get noticed but also there's like a lot of stuff coming out you know what i mean like yeah i did a kickstarter right now and at the same time, I think I've backed like eight Kickstarters this month or like in the past, like four weeks or something, because yeah. so many of my friends are doing them, 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? All their books look sick. Like I know that it's hard to do a Kickstarter. I know it's so hard. I know it's such a pain. And like, I want to help any way I can. But then it's like, oh, damn, I just threw 200 bucks yeah. into Kickstarters and mine hasn't made any money today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I wish that there was a better system for us to put stuff out where it was like, okay, you made this awesome thing. And now what do you do with it? You know, where mm-hmm. are you going to put this? How are you going to get this in front of a bunch of people? And like, so something I think we're both still figuring out. And, you know, I think we're building a good community of people that are all kind of figuring this out together. But yeah, I think that's probably what's keeping people held back is like, you made this amazing thing. It could be better than anything on image shelves right now or mm-hmm. dark horse or, you know, but it doesn't have that reach. So you know, what happens? Don't get discouraged. It's just like, find a way to get in front of people, you know, and I'm still figuring that out. I thought with the dinosaurs, it just has like a visual appeal. It has oh, yeah. like an, a nostalgia feel. Cause it's like, Oh, it's like Ninja Turtles, but not really. Um, it reminded me of like, you know, what was what was the shark dudes from the nineties? Do you remember? Street sharks. Street, street sharks. It, it, and yes. Like, like that's all those it. there was like, like even a dinosaur one along those lines, I feel. Something like that. Um, Extreme I, dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember all those like cartoons from like, you know, even gargoyles and stuff like that. It felt like yeah. that early vibe I would get when you know, Batman the anime series and Spider Man was out, you know, and I'd watch all those together. Um and but yeah same i literally good. same i watched all those th- and and that's that's the imprint that's like what got us here except for our story it's like what if those heroes failed what if they like failed and let the girl die in mm-hmm. the beginning you know what i mean they got cocky or whatever and they right yeah so like that's where our story picks up is 10 years after they retire can they still be heroes? Do they still have it in like, and I like that it kind of goes back to being like a comic creator. It's like, you're going to get, you're going to fail all the time. (laughs) You're going to fail, 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 fail. Can you still get into it? Can you still go back in and try? Can Mm -hmm. you try? You know what I mean? And I like that. It's just about, it's about trying. Can you, can you try after you've just messed up big time? You know, how is that for you? Um, we are talking about doing this as like an animation, you know, years ago and then transitioning it to comics like there that that's a long gap. You know, it's 2023 now when you're working on this and finally it's coming to life like yeah. as a book. Um, how do you like fail and get yourself back up and want to still do it and brush it off and just keep on going? You, you know, there's some stories that just like won't leave you alone they're almost like demons they're like demons that possess you and like this is me and my buddy like exercising this demon out of our system so that we could move on finally you know what i mean like we need to get this one out you know uh but i think there's been times where it was completely dead where we would just be like you know we're done we're done with this we're moving on to other projects i'm doing other things i'm filling that void with something else but like Mm -hmm. I always, we always kind of felt like it was just too good. You know, I I would call it like, like a golden ticket, like a Willy Wonka golden ticket, because the story just works so well. And there's so much like fun there and heart there. It's, it's like so stupid and silly, but somehow it has like an enormous heart. So, like, that's what I love about it. And that's something that like just was really hard to let go. Even if I did do other projects, it would always be like, well, those dinosaurs are still somewhere, you know, like we should really figure those out so i feel good that we finally like are putting it to page and it feels right as a comic you know i think it works and it's still like fun but it's it's yeah you have to just like be committed to stuff and and if you have to take a break from it that's fine too and you know circling back is great i love having like old developed stories that Mm -hmm. i could like dig up and like give a shot of life to and and then it's like oh this is a brand new thing you know Cause sometimes you just like have that idea, but you just haven't had that experience yet. Um, or to like really just nail it and solidify it. Like, you know, I thought of teenage Babylon years ago when I was like kind of entering college and I was trying to write a, my first different story. Cause I was just doing sci-fi heavy sci-fi stuff and all my prose writing and all that stuff. And so I was just like, all right, well, this isn't working and I just don't know where to go from it. And then life happened. And I just went through a whole, a whole bunch of life. And then I kind of came across an artist and I was like, well, I have this idea. I didn't know where to go with it. And once I got to sit down and be like, well, 
what has happened that I could put into the story now? And it just all came out. And I was just like, I just needed to live a little bit more. I just needed to have some experience and to mm -hmm. let the story like live literally in like the universe for a bit because I thought of it, it existed. Now it just needed to grow. And now that I've grown, I could finally like tell the story the way it should be told. Um, and that's really like, like that. admirable. You know, you gotta, you gotta just like, you know, put things down for a minute. You're, I think everyone has great ideas, but you just can't, if you're forcing it and pushing it too hard, um, it's just gonna, it's just gonna hurt and you're not gonna be too happy with it sometimes. Yeah. I, I think it's never gonna turn out the way you hope when you have mm -hmm. to like force it too much. Like, so like, I'm even like, I want to, I want to write more pop scars. I have like a volume two outlined and, um, I love it. I think it's really dope and I like my way in and all that. But I've only written like little bits. Like I haven't actually written it yet, but I have it all. But I'm just like letting it like just like, I don't know, stew a bit and mm -hmm. still kind of figuring out like I want to know it in my head before I sit down to kind of write it. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. It's, you know, sometimes a lot of people just say like 90% of writing is like staring at like a blank page or just like staring at the wall. But it's because you are writing in your head. You're kind of just replaying that scene over and over and you have to like see it and feel it enough to be able like I can tell I could verbally describe this scene in this moment so well that I could capture the imagery and the dialogue and the emotions mm -hmm. and just you know kind of make it and start stacking it from there and it takes a while sometimes to really just like it's not working it's not working it's not working it's literally what directors do when they're shooting a film and they're doing takes they're shooting and then they redo it and then they redo it. And sometimes you hear about wild, like 30, 40 takes for a scene. And it's like, yeah, because they're replaying it until it works. And that's right. what writers do when we're writing on the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. You're right. Takes like that is them trying to just get that right, that right sequence of moments, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what do you think is like the biggest challenge when you're approaching publishers? Um, I know a lot of indie comic creators want to like jump into like just making their book and jumping into a publisher right away. What's your insight on going from just, you know, should you just keep on making your own and have it out there and put it out there? But like, how do you get involved with some of these publishers? Like, I know um, you're part of like Behemoths and Sumerian for a bit with Pop Scars, and you just have that experience. Like, what was it like pitching to them and to other labels and going through even rejection? I th like so we did pop scars as a kickstarter first mm -hmm. like before they even knew about me before i really even knew about them you know <clears throat> they were behemoth when i was kind of like first putting the book out yeah um <clears throat> and i knew that like once i saw them it was like oh this is like a cool like smaller publisher that's putting out some like interesting stuff and some weird stuff yeah and, like you know i think i always i always would have loved to do image you know, like everybody wants to do image, yeah. you know, but I kind of thought like, yeah, it's my first book. Let's just like make this Kickstarter happen and see how it goes. And like, I, I was just like focusing on, I needed to finish the book. I didn't really like, wasn't super concerned with publishing until like, once we kind of got linked up, I guess through just like, it's so easy to follow people and be in those circles now that like you can just like message people super easily on any of the social things. And it's like, Oh, I'm now connected to this publisher in some way. It's like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, I think that's how it starts is just like sharing your stuff, getting your stuff out there, letting people know like you're making something it's, it's cool. It's badass, you know, it's different. And like, I think sometimes people take notice and like, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm a big like character design person. So like pop scars, like to me lives and dies. Visually on awesome. The dude. character yeah. design of pinky. She's like, really like this. Like, I think you see her once and it's like, Oh, that's like a cool comic character, you mm -hmm. know? And like, I think that had a lot of power was like just the, just the cover of her walking down the street is like enough to see, you see it once and it's enough where yeah. it's like, Oh, I want a piece of that. What's that? What's her deal? And like, <clears throat> I honestly don't think that this book, like the story is what people expected. I think it goes way, way, 
weirder directions than people than that image lets on i think that image is a different story you know mm -hmm. what i mean <clears throat> i'm hoping though i kind of got that story out of my system i'm hoping that like the next story is maybe more in line with like what that expectation of that image is you know what i mean yeah like exactly <clears throat> i think you have an assumption of like oh this is going to be about like she's going to kill hollywood <clears throat> and she kind of does mm -hmm. but it's different and it's slower and it's way more like <clears throat> i call it like a horror um what are those daytime tv shows a soap opera yeah, it's like yeah, a it's go. like a gory soap opera you know where it's yeah. like <clears throat> there's not body stacking up i think only like three people die in the whole book you know and only and two of them are like intentional one is like an accident uh it's not like a ton of people are just dying and getting killed left and right you know but i think there's something about that image where you're just like oh it's going to be a bloodbath and it's yeah hollywood and gore and you know i don't i don't think we actually got there i think i had to get this other story out of my system first you know that's awesome um because you know what that's the thing about comics too is that captivating them dude look at batman look at spider-man all these things you, you captivate them with an image the appeal dude spawn is like 90 percent of why 98 percent of why spawn is cool it's is the drip visual that yeah. visual drip he's just <laughs> yes. like oh he's so cool so yeah. awesome like i mean I, I love Spawn purely because I grew up on bands like Kiss. And then I see a comic character like Spawn. I'm like, well, that just fits perfectly. You know, like yeah, I want that case. Yeah. And so you captivate them by that. And that's what really inspires people. And that's what really sticks. And then they can see it. And so picking up the book, you have to really lure them in by that. You know, judging a book by its cover. They say not to, but everyone does. And oh, everyone course. judges a comic book by its cover. 1000%. And if that doesn't get you right away... Um, to some appeal, you're probably not going to pick it up. So that's the right route to be like, yeah, how do I get this <clears throat> visually to lure someone in and then, yeah. you know, throw a curveball at them to really keep them in at that point? Because expectations are fun. And if you picked up that book and it was everything I thought it'd be cool, you know what I mean? Like it was exactly everything I thought, but you pick up a book and it's like what you kind of thought it'd be, but so much more. Yeah. that's like true like artistry at that point that's what we tried we really talked a lot about the cover and like we got to make it pop uh and you know she has to look you know this is her her moment and <clears throat> i think if you read issue two and you don't if you don't like it by then you won't like it but if you like it by then the story will just get better i think and as it goes um but that's really just like point two i mean honestly if you can't get them by like issue two issue one's a good setup and to like lure you into the second issue, but if you're yeah. not hooked by that you second be issue, by this issue yeah. too, because I, you know, Pop Scars is six issues, so it kind of like you know I don't really love the three act structure. I try to avoid it, but like it, everything falls into it. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what if you avoid it or not. That's just how story works. It's, it's so like you need those big moments so that people are going to continue to read. Otherwise, it's just like who cares, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like two issues in that's the end of act one so the end of act one has to be this big moment you know uh that's kind of how it broke up um but i think you know you got to put your stuff out there and you got to finish your stuff whether mm -hmm. a publisher sees it or not i think uh you know it's <clears throat> uh, what i don't like is submitting to the ether it's like here you know submit your comic to this publisher email and hope that somebody receives it like to me I it's just yeah it's frustrating that's that's hard so i would much rather have some any kind of just like loose connection on like social media with somebody where i could be like this is uh, this is my book this is what i'm working on uh, it would, like do you mind checking it out you know if not totally fine i'm gonna do it anyway you know mm -hmm. it just that could be an in you know i just i don't know about those those submissions if like that's worth it or not you know it almost seems sure. to just go into a void <clears throat> at that point you know i could tell totally yeah. you yeah and and they're gonna pick the names like comic names you know they'll they'll always go with a name first i think then like I, something no, different great point because you know talking about anthologies and everything when we go through our anthology list you know we've come to learn and know about a lot of indie creators and i've met yeah. a lot of made a lot of cool friends and out of out of a pure like just 
honest and you know fair game to stuff like anthologies we look strictly at the story first and then we go back and look at the credits because we don't want to have a pre uh like you know a favorable outcome right from the start i don't want to see like a friend like kevin or david luhan and then be like oh it's them oh it's gonna be great i'm just gonna toss them in it's like no you're still going through the submission process like we still have to see the quality and i feel like we've even move people down and not put stories into a book being like, you know, this is a great story and they're a great person, but it just doesn't fit what we're doing here. And if you play the unfair game, you're going to have just some stuff that just doesn't fit. And you did it just because they're your friend. And I don't think that's like, it's not proper if you're putting out stuff in comics and it's not fair to like upcoming creators who are missing a chance to getting published because their work was badass enough. It was high enough quality but you just didn't know the right people when you submitted. So like talking to someone like you're saying and building that connection, you know, you're trying to give yourself because that's how most people do play. You got to get yourself that favorable outcome for a lot of these publishers and make yourself known a little bit. Um, Yeah. I don't think everyone plays the way, you know, Apollo like does when we do anthologies. No, I mean, I think that's smart to to go that route, you know, but I, what you're talking about too is like, I think, networking is like huge and i don't think comic mm-hmm. people do it enough i think i did the film industry world where like literally like i'm looking for a job every other day and i'm all i'm doing is trying to network and meet people and make something happen mm-hmm. and i did that for 10 years and like now i'm just like oh god no please but like yeah. you know i learned a lot of cool skills from that world that i fall like beautifully in line with like comic production and like networking and getting yourself out there is is not hard or difficult for me i feel like it's just part of it you know and i think comic people might be a little more introverted than Mm -hmm. like movie people i think movie people are like really like boisterous about whatever they think about anything they're just like ah, you know you're always having to be on because you never know who you're going to bump into in different situations like that too comics are way more like insular and like you're like working with a computer or a pad and a pen and it's just like way more of a, like a like a a bubble versus yeah. you know like oh hey 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 nice to meet you you know mm-hmm. so i think like comic people sh- just need to talk to people more yeah and i think conventions are really fun to meet people at and signings and stuff like that and it's really cool you could just go up and say hey what's going on you know i think comic creators are not like they're not like celebrities in the way that like actors are or something like that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I yeah. think they're way more like chill people who like are just like fortunate to have their stuff kind of showcased, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I think it's it just like talk comic people just need to to open up a little and talk to everybody, you know? You know, we, we talk a lot on the show about, you know, how communities have helped us and how finding the right community and finding the right group of people, especially online, makes it easier for a lot of creators because you could, it's easier to kind of type a message and retag and repost and not have to be, you know, physically and, you know, verbally there on screen. Um, but if you do your social media at least right, like if, you, if you're really hesitant about, you know, talking to people in person and all that type of stuff, at least try to curate your social media well enough to like make it presentable and show your work and your personality a little bit. Um, so when you do talk to people, they realize like, okay, look at this art I'm making. Like I might be, you know, a little bit shy, but I can do the work and look what I'm producing and wanting to do. Um, networking is the best way to do it because I mean, I'm telling you without networking, I would have never come across lesser known comics and mark bernal and all these other indie creators without going to a convention i would have never met comics wellspring and had conversations about them and for them to get to know me and do the show like it was all through like social media and doing what i was doing every single day and just not like letting it go and going out there and just talking to a few people when you're at conventions like go up to other tables and, you know, take a break from your booth for a moment. And if you can possibly, and, you know, visit the other tables, trade books, you know, like support each other. And I think comic book people do that more than any other industry out there. Cause it's not a competition for us, I feel, or at least it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And I I don't think it is either. I think it is like, there's plenty of room. There's always going to need the need to publish more books. Like, so Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's just cool to, 
kind of push each other and help each other when when you can and meeting people at conventions is is rad you know and i i'm excited i have a la comic-con coming up cool i got invited by my comic shops which is super rad and just going to be there as part of like that team so i'm excited to like to it's you know it's been a while or i don't know if i've ever really done like a comic-con as like a signee no i don't think so so this is going to be like i've gone as a fan so this is going to be kind of cool to like really be on have my own booth set up and stuff like yeah. that you know see that's super awesome too i mean boothing and tabling is you know even doing it at your local shop when possible i think is just a great experience um I think so i've been too. fortunate enough to do like large cons and help out lesser known comics with some smaller ones i just tabled at my local shop for a halloween like event and it was cool. just really good experience of being part of a team and boothing and sharing a booth with people, but also like boothing on my own and having to just represent my stuff. Like you get so much experience out of those times and you learn from other creators that are there um, watching their setups. It's kind of like going to a concert and then you're just like watching different bands stage setups and being like, oh, what can I do there? Can I take their lighting like rig and like do something like that? Or, you know, how they yeah, came out sure. it was taking all that stuff and taking it to that's why all of us are trying to get banners now. Because we saw one person with a banner. And Banners, all of us yeah. Like, I think Banners everyone's right. going to want a wham stand now because I think yeah. they're so Dude. sick. I just did a – yeah, you got them both. Yeah. I just yeah. I just did a signing at a shop, and I had them. And they're just like – they're so awesome. Matt is so awesome. He's Such a good dude. Guy. Yeah, I get to I got to like hang out with him a couple of times, and it's just like it's cool. Oh, cool. I, I, think, I think what he's doing uh, could serve like – every comic creator every like kind of collector should mm-hmm. have these kind of things they're so they're so rad what a great way to display stuff yeah i mean presentation is everything <clears throat> with comics you know in a wham stand and i hate it's kind of like a shameless promo because they help no, us so much but like pr- promo it hits they're they're really sick he dude. like and those things are you know little magnets you put i have them on my fridge when i'm not using Same. them on there i just put them <laughs> on my fridge this morning yeah, yeah that's why i don't got the other ones with me yeah <laughs> No, they're great. He, so yeah, I think uh, just get like you know make the book and get it out there. I think those are like the biggest things that we have to all figure out and keep doing and keep figuring out. You know, mm-hmm. that's what you know. I got to meet Neil Gaiman once, and he his best advice was just like finish your story. Like the best advice I could tell you, no matter no matter what happens with the story, <clears throat> just finish telling it. And then when yeah. you're done with that one, finish telling your next story. And yeah. you never know what's going to happen with them. And I was I, like, you're right. Like, yeah. I, I just met Rick Remender at this the signing. He, he was nice. one of the people that I was like, oh, I'm going to go meet Rick and just be like, hey, dude. Huge fan <laughs> of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am too. I, I think he's written like so many books that I just like have on my shelf that I, I love. And it's like, oh, you know, Rick Remender wrote that. Oh, of course he did, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I went and shared Pop Scars with him. And I was just like kind of asking it for a little advice and just and he's like, you're already like doing it. And he like held up my own book and like he's like, you're doing it just like and okay. he's like, just keep doing it. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> you know, great. that is that's, that's great so advice. Crazy. It's like, you know, OK, I am I'm on because I, I was like, uh, you know, like he he's involved in like film and TV adaptations and just like all this really cool stuff. And I think it just comes with keep doing it you know keep making your books and like and that he's stuff someone that will did come. indie stuff from like fear agent <clears throat> and to doing like marvel craziness and then he stepped away from that to focus on giant generator where he got to do <laughs> deadly class and seven to eternity and you know black science and all these great books and black science awesome oh so good yeah. i'm so i i get those can uh, the compendium versions are like awesome that's what i brought to version. for him to sign was black science nice. yeah nice that's that's uh, one of my top that influenced me uh i read issue one and then i had a whole sci-fi thing and i was just like man i he inspired the hell out of me it's really cool yeah. that you're also a great fan oh um, yeah his stuff is so cool and he works with the coolest artists ever yeah you know all his books look just like oh well, talk about a guy so that's bringing artists to the playing field you know yeah like yeah. about finding good artists and having them do his work and you know getting them out there and he's brought into the place so many great creators um yeah. that's like all of our goals you know what i mean it's just to continue to elevate people and for us to take a level up and elevate other people because we recognize their skill and arts and we know they should be like 
out there and doing awesome stuff. Oh yeah, like for like even Santi who did Pop Scars, like man, I, I he's such a fantastic artist, and I would love to see him doing big books because like mm-hmm. he's capable, he's so good. Like you know, I, I would I think he's a couple jobs away from just being like hugely in demand because oh. he's just so talented, you know. Yeah, and it's you know finding you know creators that do not just cover work but that can do the sequential aspect. That's the whole thing about comics too. And when you're finding those artists and putting them out there, you're going to, you know, change their lives a little bit. And it's the best. But they part. change yours too. Cause it's yeah. like, Oh, you can't draw. You can't get your book out <laughs> unless you have this amazing artist help you, you know? So it's like, it's a good, a good team, you know? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, just to wrap it up here, uh, dude, you've, you've done so much. You have so much in the works. Uh, what is, what is like the hardest thing you have really had to like overcome and just face while you're making comics and really just come to terms to accept so that you won't give up and you could really say that this is what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, like you said before, I think sometimes like life happens. It does not sometimes it like does happen yeah. and uh, <laughs> it, it, it will happen at the, for you, what you think is the worst time possible you know, but it's not about you. It's like, this stuff is just going to happen. And like, sometimes you're going to get defeated and like, that's okay. It's, you know, I had to take like three months this year away from anything. I had to just stop. And it was like right in the middle of pop scars coming out where Mm. it's like, Oh, this is like the best time ever. But it's like, well, is it, you know, sometimes the real life stuff is heavy and like, it kind of takes you back from like, Oh man, like, I just don't have it in me to do creative stuff right now or whatever, yeah. you know, and I think it's okay to just remember to take time. Don't force this stuff, you know, like I think it's good to schedule time to work on stuff and it's great to, to dive in. And, but I think if you're, if it's not, if you're not mentally there and it's not like helping you and you have other stuff going on, I think it's, it's okay to, to deal with stuff and it's okay to you know you're not going to miss your your moment i don't think yeah i think i think you're always everyone's always worried that like oh if i'm not doing this 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 like i'm missing it i'm missing something and i just think you just have to take care of yourself and if you need to have that break do that and i think when you come back you'll be so much better for it and Mm -hmm. the work will be better and actually i think you'll appreciate having that escape you know, having that place to go and work on stuff, you know? So I think that's just, yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's the, it's the marathon and it's okay to, to pause and just keel over and get your breath and then say, okay, I'm going to get back up and keep going, you know? Dude. Yeah. And you look at, I follow a lot of like athletes, like, especially like my roommate's super into CrossFit stuff. So I've gone into a lot of that type of stuff. And, um, Mal O'Brien, who is this girl who did like, she was like champion, like three, four years in a row. And she, the girl's super young, um, like 18, 20 years old, just killing it. And, you know, you think you're at the top and you're getting all this stuff work done. And she backed out of like the last championship thing. And she was like, I just needed to take a break and take care of my mental and take care of myself because as amazing as all this is, and as much as I want to do it, like I need to make sure I'm a hundred percent so I can continue doing it and not give up. Um, and you really do need to like come to terms with that sometimes and be like, I need a breather. I need to rest like nothing, you know, and it, you know, if you're fortunately like a lot of indie creators are very supportive. And when I've had to do that for, you know, Apollo and my projects, and I've had to communicate with co-hosts and artists and creators, luckily I'm surrounded with a good enough team. That's like, Oh dude, take as much time as you need. Like, you know, take care of yourself so that we can continue doing the best we can creatively and so that you can have the right outlet you want. So finding those people you can work with that can be understanding. But even if not, like that probably means it wasn't going to work anyways. And it's a good thing. That's and true. Taking care of yourself is always top priority and it takes time. Nobody's, nobody's, you know, the, the whole age thing, I think freaks people out too. Like I'm running out of time to do this. I'm running out of time. But I've met people who are six months into the game. I've met people that are 20 years into the game. And yeah. it's all about how you handle it. And it's not about when it comes out. It's about making sure it just gets done and does come out. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, Pop Scars took me 
before anyone even saw anything four years to for me to write it and find the the person to help me find phil it took four years you know uh but then it comes out and it seems like oh it's like oh pop scars it's all done and then you did it but like yeah man it took me forever to do it you know so yeah it's like, uh i think it's okay to take your time because i think it's, good good things you know they need to they need to like they need to like stew you know yeah they gotta, you gotta season it let it sit for a while you know what i mean get the mm-hmm. flavor and then build off of it it's it's circling back how this whole conversation started you know what yeah. i mean um and some projects just take time and it takes you years for someone to read something in 10 minutes but you know those 10 minutes can change someone's day it could change that's what we hope right i hope that those 10 minutes just like put them somewhere else inspire them fire yep yeah yeah that's what we all hope for right is just to give them a little bit of like something you know just to change up their 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 vibe you know Mm -hmm. they might you know this comics transform all of our lives and that's why we're all doing them and that's why we talk about them so deeply and passionately oh Um, yeah and i love that you're on that same mindset and i love that you're not going to stop and there's so much more to look forward to you um why don't you drop us where we could find you and what you're going to be up to in 2024 okay so 2024 we will you know i'm at punch publishing that's where you can like always kind of talk to me at punch publishing on instagram i don't do anything else really uh other social media stuff that's just kind of it um you know we have the jurassic park core 4 on kickstarter right now uh i guess this is probably coming out later right this is yeah out just so i did have that on kickstarter uh and it did great <laughs> uh <laughs> did you great yeah did you great from day one so yeah uh so that's going to come out this summer, which I'm stoked about graphic novel. And then we're going to probably try to get that out further, maybe into shops right. or something. Um, and then my wife's book should be working on like through till next year. So that's going to be a graphic novel as well. Uh, and I just, I can't wait to share more about that. And then, you know, I hope that we, we see more pop scars somewhere, you know, with whoever i hope that that's that's something that i I, there's more story for it you know and i i i just know i'm not going to be able to let it go until i i I get it all out you know (laughs) yeah i feel you i have stories like that and i was just talking about a project with a creator and i was like well there's this one idea and it's like one of my first ideas and it's exactly what you're saying it's one of those things where you have an idea and you're like oh well it's old i've grown past it probably like it should be but there's some things that hook you so much you yeah. just need to like just find a way to get it out. And I'm happy that you're working on that because I feel like all of us have that. And some people even get ashamed of being like, I can't let go of this idea. Like if it's that close to you, don't like just yeah, give no, it time. Keep it. Yeah. Give it time. Water it. You know what I mean? Feed it a little bit and just let it grow and it'll happen. Yeah. Cause by the time you do put it out, it's gonna be like epic. You know, yeah. it will be like an epic kind of story because it's not something you threw together in 20 minutes, you know yep yeah exactly um dude i'm so excited to hopefully get you back on the show the show soon and Thanks, to talk man. to you and maybe get your wife on to talk about the book um, she would love that yeah, be fun. that'd be really fun that'd be really great uh pat thank you so much for your time and uh Brand, thanks, thanks for man. hanging yeah awesome dude Story,